Hello everyone, the sound of gunfire echoing through the late autumn air signals, a fierce battle brewing between humans and a surprising enemy wild boars. After a thriving summer, with millions of tourists enjoying the pristine beaches, few expected the months before winter to turn dark as three million ferocious wild boars wreak havoc across the land. These wild animals are not just dangerous individually, but when they attack in packs, they become a true menace, threatening the economy and the very lives of the people. What disasters have these wild boars caused? Join us as we uncover the truth, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We're aiming for 100,000 subscribers, and your support is essential. Wild boars are incredibly powerful and dangerous when they attack, weighing up to 200 kg and capable of running at speeds of 40 km, they are equipped with sharp fangs that can inflict severe injuries. What makes them even more terrifying is their tendency to attack in herds, often numbering dozens, making them a formidable force. According to wildlife experts, in just the three months leading up to winter, wild boars have launched over 1,000 attacks on livestock and farms. These relentless raids have caused an estimated 10 billion VND images, leaving farmers struggling to protect their livelihoods from these ferocious creatures. Experts predict that if this battle against the wild boars is not brought under control, the region could face economic losses of up to $5 billion within the next six months. The pre-winter months are particularly critical as natural food sources dwindle, pushing these ferocious animals to become even more aggressive, ready to attack anything in their path. The stakes are high, and with the increasing frequency of these destructive raids, the urgency for action grows. So, after these shocking incidents, what policies has the government introduced to prevent this looming disaster and safeguard both the economy and the people? Let's dive into the strategies being rolled out to stop the wild boar invasion. Realizing the urgency of the situation, the government introduced a policy allowing controlled hunts to manage the wild boar population. Hunters are required to complete a wildlife management course and demonstrate skill in tracking and handling dangerous animals. To encourage participation, the government offers a reward of $1,500 per wild boar captured or killed. Up to 100 hunting groups are allowed to form, each equipped with high-powered rifles and crossbows. Hunters are also trained in ethical hunting practices to ensure safety and humane methods throughout the Wild boars are primarily hunted in rural areas where they cause the most damage particularly near farmlands and forested regions. The prime hunting season is during the late autumn months, when the boars are most aggressive and food is scarce. Signs of their presence include disturbed soil, tracks, and the destruction of crops. Hunters use rifles like the 308 Winchester due to its accuracy and power, while Tanks 42 binoculars are commonly used to spot wild boars from a distance. To ensure a humane kill, hunters are trained to aim for the heart or lungs, which results in a quick and ethical end to the hunt. However, hunting wild boars comes with significant challenges. These animals are intelligent and highly unpredictable, <laughs> often charging at hunters when cornered. 
Yeah, on the run. Ethical concerns also arise when hunting in areas near residential zones or farms, where the risk of accidental injury to non-target animals is higher. In one case, a hunter misjudged the terrain and accidentally shot a domestic pig sparking an outcry about the ethical boundaries of hunting in densely populated areas. This highlights the importance of well-trained, responsible hunters who understand both the risks and the ethics involved. Despite the difficulties, wild boar hunting has attracted thrill-seekers and sport hunters eager for the challenge. The hunts have boosted local economies, increasing income for nearby communities by up to 20 as tourists and hunters flock to the region. The money raised from hunting permits and rewards helps offset the damages that wild boars cause to livestock farmers, making it a crucial economic activity. The efforts of top hunters to manage the wild boar population <clears throat> are essential to restoring balance and protecting the livelihoods of local people. A like or a word of encouragement can give them the strength they need to continue their work. Let's support them by leaving a comment below Currently, the United States is facing the presence of approximately 4,000 to 4,500 lions primarily concentrated in the state of Montana. Their unexpected appearance has caused confusion and fear among residents, as lions are not native to this region. The sudden encounters have raised concerns about safety and the potential impact on local wildlife. So, what challenges have these lions introduced to the United States? Join us as we explore this intriguing situation and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. In Montana, lions have reportedly killed between 800 to 1,000 cattle, primarily targeting calves and young livestock. This has resulted in significant financial losses for farmers, with the damage estimated to be in the hundreds of thousands of us dollars. Montana, being the most affected state, faces a growing challenge in dealing with these predators as they impact both the cattle industry and the local economy. So, how can Montana farmers protect their cattle and safeguard their livelihoods? What? To deal with these ferocious lions with sharp fangs, Montana farmers have taken measures such as locking their livestock in safer, more secure barns and using guard dogs to protect and signal when lions are spotted from a distance. However, these are only temporary solutions, as the lions have become increasingly aggressive due to a growing food shortage, with a reported 1520 rise in such behavior. Despite these efforts, many cases remain uncontrollable, including attacks on humans, leading to serious injuries. Realizing this urgent situation, what has the U.S. government and done to address this growing threat again. and ensure public safety? In response to the growing threat of lion attacks, the United States has turned to an ancient yet effective solution, bow and arrow hunting. Each year, hundreds of seasoned hunters embark on this challenging endeavor, driven not only by the thrill of the hunt, but by the need to protect their communities and livestock.
divided into tightly knit groups of four to six. Each team is a blend of expert marksmen, seasoned trackers, and assistant hunters, working in harmony to outwit one of nature's most dangerous predators. But how does this hunt unfold in such a wild and unpredictable landscape? The key lies in the trackers. These skilled individuals scour the terrain for signs, fresh paw prints, disturbed foliage, or even distant growls that signal the lion's presence. Armed with high-tech GPS devices and motion-sensing cameras, they follow the clues like detectives on the trail of a notorious criminal. Once the lion's location is confirmed, they alert the hunters, keeping a safe distance of at least 200 yards to avoid detection by the lion's powerful sense of smell. The thrill intensifies as the hunters move in, each Let's step measured, lion. silent, and deliberate. When it's time to strike, the hunters rely on their precision and tools. Equipped with compound bows, they shoot from 50 to 100 yards away, their arrows designed to pierce the thick hide of a lion. Binoculars aid in ensuring the shot is accurate, while the hunters aim for vital areas like the chest or lungs to guarantee a swift, humane takedown. If successful, the assistant hunter is quick to step in, securing the area and helping with the retrieval of the prey. Every movement, every decision, must be perfect, one wrong step, and the lion could vanish into the wilderness or worse, turn the tables on the hunters. After each hunt, teams typically take down one to two lions, with their results reported to wildlife management agencies. This is more than just a hunt, it's a strategic effort to reduce lion attacks by an estimated 25-30, protecting both humans and livestock. But here's the question. Does this method strike the right balance between conservation and safety, or is it too extreme? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Mountain goats, an extraordinary species inhabiting the rugged terrains of number around 3 million in the United States. These resilient animals are perfectly adapted to their harsh environments, flourishing in the steep, rocky landscapes of the Rocky Mountains and other high-altitude areas. Renowned for their agility and distinctive features, thick fur, long black horns, and bearded appearance, Mountain goats captivate both wildlife enthusiasts and hunters. Mountain goats in America are remarkable for their distinctive physical features, which are perfectly adapted to their harsh environments. One of the most noticeable traits is their prominent beard, which, along with their short tail, adds to their unique appearance. They are also characterized by their long black horns, which can range from 5.9 to 11 inches in length. These horns are not only a defining feature, but also serve practical purposes in their daily lives, such as defense and dominance Perhaps most impressive is their thick fur, a crucial adaptation for surviving in the extreme cold of their high-altitude habitats. This dense, woolly coat provides exceptional insulation, 
allowing mountain goats to withstand temperatures as low as fit. The fur's effectiveness at retaining body heat ensures these animals remain active and healthy even in the most frigid conditions. together. These physical traits make mountain goats well-suited to their rugged environments, enabling them to thrive in some of the most challenging terrains in North America. Besides, their feet are ingeniously designed for scaling steep, rocky slopes with inclines exceeding 60D, granting them remarkable stability and grip. This feature enables these animals to easily traverse the daunting terrain of the Rocky Mountain. Consequently, their presence is primarily confined to these remote areas, making them seldom seen in more accessible locations. The difficult landscape not only provides a natural refuge for the goats, but also creates substantial obstacles for hunters seeking to track and hunt these elusive creatures. The hunting season for mountain goats in the U.S. typically runs from late August to late November, although the exact dates can vary depending on state regulations. It is crucial for hunters to apply for a hunting license, as this not only ensures compliance with legal requirements, but also helps in the management and conservation of mountain goat populations. Understanding state-specific regulations and guidelines is essential for a successful and responsible hunting experience. These regulations may include specific dates, hunting zones, and quotas to maintain sustainable populations and protect the ecosystem. When embarking on a mountain goat hunt, selecting the appropriate equipment is crucial for a successful and ethical hunt. The right gun, typically a high-powered rifle, is essential for its performance and range, ensuring that the hunter can make an accurate and humane shot even from a distance. Additionally, a quality pair of binoculars is indispensable for spotting and tracking these elusive animals in their rugged, mountainous habitat. binoculars with high magnification and clarity allow hunters to observe the terrain and the movement of goats from afar, aiding in planning and executing the hunt with precision. Properly chosen equipment not only enhances the hunting experience, but also ensures the safety and effectiveness of the hunt. One of the primary advantages of using guns for hunting mountain goats is the performance and range that firearms provide. Guns allow hunters to engage their targets from a considerable distance, which is particularly useful in the rugged and often inaccessible terrain where mountain goats reside. This capability not only increases the efficiency of the hunt, but also enhances the likelihood of a successful outing, as hunters can take accurate shots without needing to get too close to these elusive animals.
Another significant benefit of hunting with guns is the safety it affords to the hunter. The ability to maintain a safe distance from potentially dangerous wildlife reduces the risk of injury. Additionally, modern firearms are designed with various safety features that further protect the hunter during the expedition. This combination of efficiency and safety makes hunting mountain goats with guns a preferred method for many hunters. One of the primary disadvantages of hunting mountain goats with guns is the ethical concerns it raises. Many people question the morality of hunting these majestic animals, which are often seen as symbols of the rugged wilderness. The act of hunting for sport, particularly with high-powered rifles, can be viewed as unfair to the animals who stand little chance against such advanced weaponry. This perspective is further fueled by the belief that animals should be respected and preserved in their natural habitats rather than hunted for recreation. What drives these majestic yet dangerous predators to encroach upon human habitats, leading to such necessary interventions? Let's find out together, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get our latest updates. In July 2024, South Africa was ravaged by significant bushfires, severely reducing the natural food sources of leopards. As a result, these predators began to invade farms, seeking alternative prey and often targeting, notably, Muipla as Hereford's farm in the Eastern Cape was particularly affected, has reported consistent leopard attacks on their cows. Each year, the farm loses approximately 4,250 cows to these predators, resulting in a devastating financial impact. These losses account for about 30% of the farm's annual revenue, translating to a staggering 4.5 million US dollars. To protect communities from predators, an estimated 2,500 to 3,000 hunters participate in hunting organizations annually in South Africa, focusing primarily on controlling leopard populations. To legally participate in these hunts, hunters must obtain a hunting license and a specialized permit to hunt leopards. The cost of these licenses varies, typically ranging from 500 to 1500 US dollars, depending on the region and specific regulations in place. This fee helps fund conservation efforts and ensures that hunting is conducted in a sustainable and regulated manner. So why is the dry season in South Africa ideal for leopard hunting? <sighs> hunting organizations in South Africa usually schedule these activities during the dry season, which runs from May to September. This timing is strategic, as leopards are more likely to be active and visible during these months due to the scarcity of water sources, making it easier for hunters to track and spot them. 
Hunters typically use high-caliber rifles, often equipped with advanced scopes for accuracy over long distances. In addition to firearms, hunters rely on a range of equipment, including camouflage clothing, to blend into the environment and GPS the devices left. to track the movement of leopards. Additionally, to increase their chances of a successful hunt, hunters often use baiting methods to lure leopards. This involves placing fresh meat in areas where leopards are known to roam. The bait is positioned to draw the predator into a specific location, usually within the hunter's line of sight, ensuring a clear shot. This method, while controversial, is effective in controlling leopard populations and preventing them from posing a threat to livestock and human settlements. How do you think teamwork and collaboration impact the success and safety of leopard hunts in South Africa? To ensure safety during leopard hunts in South Africa, hunting organizations typically divide participants into small groups of four to five people. These groups usually consist of experienced hunters trackers, and sometimes local guides who are familiar with the terrain and leopard behavior. The collaboration within these small teams has brought increased precision and safety, minimizing the risk of accidents and improving the overall success rate of the hunts. After the hunting process is completed, these groups are required to report detailed information to the hunting organization. This includes the number of leopards hunted, the exact locations of the hunts, and any significant observations made during the process. The data collected also helps in adjusting future hunting strategies and maintaining a balance between predator control and conservation efforts. How do you think organized hunting can contribute to both wildlife management and community safety? In particular, the organized and systematic approach to leopard hunting in South Africa has significantly highlighted the role of these hunting organizations in managing wildlife and protecting communities. Over the years, these organizations have contributed to a noticeable reduction in leopard occurrences near human settlements. Specifically, the rate of leopard attacks on livestock and humans has decreased by about 16 per year, thanks to these well-regulated hunting activities. This decline in attacks has brought a sense of security to the people living in affected areas, showing the tangible benefits of controlled predator management. What are your thoughts on this approach? We'd love to hear your perspective, so please share your views in the comments section below. Stick with me. Yo, I'm gonna get the truck in here. An invasive animal species that is becoming increasingly noticeable in the United States. In the Agricultural Farm documentary, we will get closer to the journey and life of this fox. Currently, the estimated number of red foxes exceeds 1 million, widely distributed throughout the In particular, they are increasingly appearing in large cities such as Chicago and New York, where they adapt to new living environments by hunting for food in garbage areas and finding shelter in areas with green space. The red fox, widespread throughout the United States, primarily inhabits forests, grasslands, and suburbs. 
They stand out thanks to their bright red-orange fur, signature black socks, and bushy tail with a unique white tip. Red foxes adapt to different habitats, from dense forests to open grasslands, even suburban areas where humans live. Their agile hunting ability and intelligence make red foxes a formidable predator in the wild. In the United States, red foxes can be infectious and transmit other dangerous diseases to humans and pets. Some infectious diseases include sarcoptic mange, tapeworms, and especially rabies. In 2010, multiple cases of rabid red foxes were reported in the eastern United States, raising concerns in rural areas where pets are susceptible to the disease. Additionally, red foxes are famous for their ability to hunt free-ranging poultry and small livestock such as sheep. They have a cunning personality and agility, making defense difficult for farmers. Not only do foxes cause damage by hunting livestock, foxes also damage crops by digging for insects and rodents in fields and orchards. Farmers in the Midwest say irrigation systems have been seriously affected by fox burrowing, leading to disruptions and reduced crop yields. Do you think the red fox is the wild animal that has the biggest impact on American agriculture. If you agree, press number one. If not, press zero in the comments. Faced with the challenges posed by red foxes, local hunters and farmers have deployed traps to control red fox populations while also protecting agriculture. This is a popular method thanks to its ease of use. First, there is the foot trap. The traps are cleverly placed along routes frequented by foxes, using bait or camouflage techniques to blend in with the surroundings. This is a mechanical device specifically designed to grip an animal's legs. The leg trap is made from steel and equipped with padded jaws to minimize injury while still holding the prey tightly. The mechanism has a trigger which ensures that when the animal steps on the trigger plate, the jaws will automatically close, clamping the animal's legs. The leg trap is made from steel and equipped with padded jaws to minimize injury while still holding the prey tightly. The mechanism has a trigger which ensures that when the animal steps on the trigger plate, the jaws will automatically close, clamping the animal's legs. In addition, cage traps are a popular method in the U.S. These traps come in many sizes, but for red foxes, they are typically 42-48 inches long, 15-18 inches wide, and 15-18 inches tall. This size ensures the fox can move freely in the trap without injury, while the trap design ensures that no animal can escape once the door is closed. However, the process of using traps is not only laborious, but also requires regular inspection, reset, and careful placement of the trap. Currently, the estimated number of red foxes exceeds 1 million, widely distributed throughout the
In particular, they are increasingly appearing in large cities such as Chicago and New York, where they adapt to new living environments by hunting for food in garbage areas and finding shelter in areas with green space. Florida's topography is characterized by its flat terrain with extensive wetlands, coastal plains, and rolling hills in the northern regions. Surprisingly, despite not being native to the area, but Florida has seen an unexpected rise in hyena populations. An estimated 3,000 hyenas have unexpectedly appeared in Florida, primarily concentrated in counties such as Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. This sudden influx of hyenas has alarmed the nearly 6 million residents in these areas, causing disruptions in their daily lives and raising concerns about safety. So how do Florida deal with thousands of hyenas? Let's explore the answer together. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest information. Thank you. Since the beginning of 2024, Florida has received approximately 153 reports of hyena attacks on humans, tragically resulting in 34 deaths. With their sharp teeth and a bite force of up to 1,100 pounds, these predators are becoming a significant threat to the state. The cause of this alarming situation stems from hyenas' as scarce food sources, pushing them to encroach on human settlements in search of sustenance. As a result, Florida farmers have lost thousands of livestock, leading to an estimated 20 decrease in their revenue. So what should people here do to protect the lives of their communities and their economy? Let's explore possible solutions together. Florida farmers have turned to installing fences as a primary method to prevent hyena invasions, particularly in vulnerable areas like livestock pens and the borders of farm. These fences typically stand around 8 feet tall and can stretch for miles, offering a robust barrier against the predators. The advantages of this method include providing immediate protection for livestock and reducing the likelihood of hyena encounters. However, the disadvantages are significant as the high cost of installation and maintenance constrain farmers' budgets, and some hyenas have been known to find ways around or through the fences. So, do you agree with this method? If yes, please like the video, and if no, please leave the number zero in the comment section. <laughs> Realizing that fencing was only a temporary solution, hyena hunting groups quickly became widespread across Florida. This activity is primarily held in counties like Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach, occurring two to three times per year and attracting over 500 hunters annually. The benefits of this hunting activity are significant, as it has helped reduce hyena-related incidents by approximately 25, providing relief to local communities. So in your opinion, what types of weapons do hunters usually use to take down the sophisticated animal? To be effective and successful, hyena hunting in Florida typically takes place at night when these animals are most active. Hunters commonly use rifles, favored for their effectiveness and rooted in hunting tradition. Among the popular choices are high-caliber bolt-action rifles, known for their precision and stopping power. Due to the nocturnal nature of the hunt, hunters often use accompanying equipment such as night vision scopes, thermal imaging, and powerful flashlights to increase their chances of success. Hunters usually form groups of three to five people. 
Given that hyenas have excellent night vision, hunters must consider their own visibility and movement to avoid detection. Upon spotting prey, hunters should maintain a safe distance of at least 100 yards to ensure safety. When shooting, they typically aim for the chest or head to ensure a quick and humane capture. With a well-coordinated effort, a hunting group can take down four to six hyenas on each trip. After each hunting expedition, the group is required to report their results to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. This reporting aims to monitor and manage the hyena population effectively. So do you agree with the method that the residents and hunters here have applied? Please leave your opinion in the comment section below. Current estimated elephant population is about 10,000. These majestic creatures are primarily found in states like Florida, Georgia, and Idaho, where they gather in significant numbers. Understanding the distribution and habits of these elephants is vital to creating an engaging and informative farm documentary that highlights their impact and interactions in these areas. Today, join us to delve into the formidable challenges posed by elephants and explore effective strategies for managing these giants. Don't forget to leave number one to share your excitement. In the United States, elephants have caused significant agricultural losses, amounting to an annual financial impact of 12 million USD. These majestic animals, while an incredible sight, pose a substantial threat to farming communities. Specific crops such as corn, wheat, and various fruits are particularly vulnerable to elephant incursions. The damage to crops not only disrupts local economies, but also threatens the livelihood of countless farmers who rely on these yields for their sustenance and income. The movement of elephants has led to significant traffic disruptions, causing severe traffic jams. These large animals can suddenly wander onto the road, causing traffic congestion. The okay. presence of elephants on highways not only inconveniences motorists, but also causes serious safety concerns. For drivers, the sudden appearance of such large creatures can lead to accidents, threatening human life. At the same time, elephants themselves are at risk of injury or death from collisions with vehicles. These interactions highlight the urgent need for effective measures to manage elephant movements and ensure the safety of both operators and these majestic animals. Dealing with the increasing elephant population in the United States has led to the consideration of various measures, including the use of firearms. To regulate this, strict licensing requirements for using guns have been put in place. These requirements ensure that only qualified individuals who have undergone proper training and background checks are permitted to handle firearms for managing elephant-related issues. This measure aims to balance the need for immediate action and protecting human life and property with the responsibility of ensuring that firearms are used safely and ethically.
The use of guns in managing the elephant population in the United States offers several advantages. Firstly, it provides a quick response to imminent threats, ensuring that any dangerous situations involving elephants can be swiftly neutralized. This rapid intervention is crucial in protecting human lives and reducing the risk of severe injury. The use of guns can potentially reduce immediate danger to both humans and property, as it allows for the immediate removal of an aggressive or dangerously close elephant. By addressing the threat promptly, guns help minimize the potential for accidents and property damage, contributing to the safety and security of affected communities. However, using guns to manage elephant populations poses some significant disadvantages. There are strong ethical concerns and animal welfare issues associated with this method. Elephants are intelligent, social animals, and hunting raises ethical questions, often leading to public outcry and criticism from animal rights groups. Furthermore, in densely populated or agricultural areas, it can unintentionally harm wildlife, domestic pets, or even humans. Too low, too low, shoot again. Additionally, reliance on guns can escalate conflicts, potentially leading to more aggressive elephant behavior and creating a cycle of violence that complicates long-term management efforts. Hey, going here. Ah! Thus, while guns may offer a quick solution to immediate threats, the broader implications suggest the need for more humane and sustainable approaches. How do you think we can balance the need for safety and humane treatment in managing elephant populations? Addressing these challenges requires balanced and humane solutions. While the use of guns for managing elephant populations offers immediate responses to threats, it raises ethical concerns and potential for unintended harm. Thus, it is crucial to develop strategies that not only mitigate the damage caused by elephants, but also ensure their welfare, promoting coexistence between humans and elephants in a sustainable manner. What are your thoughts on using guns to manage elephant populations? If you have ideas for more effective and humane methods to protect these magnificent creatures, please share them in the comments below. We encourage you to share this video with your friends and family to raise awareness. Be sure to follow our channel for more engaging and informative content. Your insights and support are invaluable to us. On a vast river in an expansive land, millions of giant buffaloes have become a significant challenge for farmers and the global agricultural community. Their strong presence not only opens up new opportunities for food and resources, but also poses significant challenges in terms of environmental impact and the agricultural sector. These buffaloes create substantial pressure on farmers in the U.S. and worldwide. They compete with other livestock for food consumption and grazing, causing land loss and affecting the environment. Their sudden appearance also increases the risk of traffic accidents and causes economic losses for
The sudden appearance of large buffalo herds near residential areas and roadways poses serious safety risks. Traffic accidents involving buffaloes can cause significant damage to vehicles and result in injuries or fatalities. To address the buffalo problem, American farmers have implemented a buffalo hunting strategy. This approach is not only a technical task but also an adventurous challenge. Hunters must prepare meticulously, from choosing the right equipment to mastering hunting techniques. Accuracy and patience are crucial when targeting buffaloes, requiring concentration and professional skills to ensure an effective and safe hunting process. California is currently home to around 11,000 to 15,000 wild donkeys. While they may seem like harmless creatures, their growing population is creating some serious issues for the environment. These animals, with their constant grazing and trampling, are throwing the natural balance out of whack leading to damaged ecosystems and even affecting local agriculture. The result? Millions of dollars in damage that's impacting the state. So what kind of havoc have these wild donkeys really caused in California? And what can be done about it? Stick around, let's dive into this fascinating topic together. And don't forget to hit subscribe to stay in the loop with our latest updates. In California, wild donkeys pose a serious threat to crops like alfalfa, grapes, and various fruits and vegetables. Their foraging not only destroys crops, but also damages fences and irrigation systems, costing the state millions each year. In one case, a Southern California alfalfa farm suffered over $100,000 in losses after a herd of donkeys ravaged the fields and wrecked irrigation equipment. These incidents highlight the costly impact of unchecked wild donkey populations on agriculture and property. to combat the growing number of wild donkeys wreaking havoc on crops and livestock areas. Many California farmers have resorted to building high, durable fences made from steel or wood. These fences offer a practical way to protect valuable farmland and livestock from donkey intrusions. While this method provides immediate relief by keeping the animals out, it's only a temporary solution. The wild donkey population has been increasing by around 20 annually, driven by a lack of natural predators and favorable breeding conditions. This surge in numbers has led to competition between livestock and donkeys for limited food resources, straining the local environment even further. With the situation escalating, what steps has the U.S. government taken to reduce the donkey population to a more sustainable level?
In response to the rising number of wild donkeys threatening crops and property, hunting organizations across the U.S. have stepped in, offering an old-world solution to a modern problem. These groups, often made up of experienced hunters, venture out with precision rifles and the sharp instruments needed for such dangerous hunts. Typically, five to ten hunters form a team, each with their own specialized role, from tracking to taking the shot. The threat of the chase is only matched by the skill required to pull it off. And these hunters rely on everything from traditional tracking methods like hoof prints and broken branches to high-tech tools like GPs and drones to pinpoint the elusive donkeys. And what are you learning? The tracker, a key player in the group, carefully reads the landscape, following the telltale signs left behind by the wild animals. With keen eyes and the aid of advanced technology, they guide the group closer to the animal. Stealth is vital. Hunters must stay hundreds of yards away to avoid spooking their prey. The closer they are, the more critical timing becomes. When the donkeys are finally in sight, it's all about precision. The hunter waits for the perfect moment, ensuring they have a clean sight for a humane shot that won't let the animal suffer or escape. Oof. When it's time to strike, the main hunter steps forward, rifle in hand, prepared to make the shot count. These hunters favor high-powered, long-range rifles capable of accuracy over great distances. One quick, clean shot to the chest or head to ensure the donkey is taken down swiftly and humanely. The rest of the group stands ready to assist, whether to finish the hunt or retrieve the fallen animal. It's a delicate dance, requiring patience, coordination, and an understanding of the land and the prey. With these well-orchestrated hunts, groups can take down several donkeys in a single outing, making a noticeable dent in the population. Estimates suggest that hunting efforts have reduced the wild donkey population by around 10 to 15, though the problem persists. So, what do you think? Does this method strike the right balance between efficiency and conservation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Florida, once a land of sunshine, beaches, and luxurious resorts, now faces a new and terrifying challenge. When autumn arrives and hurricanes sweep through, they don't just bring destruction, they unleash a fearsome predator, two million alligators with deadly teeth. Every year, these alligators surge from the swamps after storms, posing a grave threat not only to property but to human lives as well. The question is, can the hunters in Florida win this brutal battle against nature's apex predator? Let's find out, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we aim for 100,000 subscribers. Your support is crucial to us. In the past year alone, Florida has seen more than 300 alligator attacks on people, with at least 20 resulting in fatalities. These attacks often happen when unsuspecting individuals or pets wander into the alligator's hunting range, particularly when water levels rise after storms bringing these predators closer to residential areas. The fear and panic that followed these encounters have left communities on edge. But it's not just humans at risk, alligators also target pets and livestock. 
In one alarming case, a ranch in southern Florida lost several cattle to an alligator attack, causing more than $15,000 in damages. The constant threat of these powerful creatures has wow. transformed Florida's peaceful landscape into a battleground for survival. To protect their homes and livestock, Florida residents have invested heavily in building sturdy fences, installing motion sensors, and setting up security cameras to detect the presence of alligators. On average, these protective measures cost homeowners between $5,000 and $15,000, depending on the size of the property. However, given the sheer number of alligators and their surprising ability to scale fences or find gaps, these defenses are not always foolproof. The constant threat still looms large, making residents feel trapped in a dangerous game of survival. Oh, watch this. So, to reduce the stress and danger to the people, what bold policies has the government enacted to control the growing alligator population? Let's dive into the answers. Realizing the urgent need to control the growing alligator population, the Florida government introduced a regulated hunting policy aimed at reducing the number of dangerous reptiles encroaching on residential areas. This policy allows for licensed hunters to participate in controlled hunts, with each hunter required to pass a wildlife management course and adhere to strict safety guidelines. As an incentive, hunters are offered a reward of up to $2,000 per alligator, depending on its size. Hunting typically takes place in swamps, rivers, and wetlands where alligators are most abundant. <laughs> The season runs from late summer to early autumn, when alligators are more active and easier to track. Signs of alligators include tracks in the mud, splash patterns, and the unmistakable sight of their heads, or tails breaking the surface of the water. Crocodile hunting, however, is not without its challenges. These massive creatures are not only powerful, but also incredibly stealthy capable of blending seamlessly into their swampy surroundings. Hunters often face the risk of alligators ambushing them from beneath the water or attacking boats. In one specific case, a hunter in the Everglades found himself caught off guard when an alligator lunged at his boat, causing severe damage and forcing him to abandon the hunt. The unpredictable behavior of these reptiles combined with the treacherous environments they inhabit, makes hunting them a dangerous and demanding task. Despite these difficulties, crocodile hunting has drawn thrill-seekers and seasoned hunters alike, eager to test their skills against one of nature's fiercest predators. The economic impact has been significant, as hunting permits and tourism associated with alligator hunts have provided a much-needed boost to local economies. In some areas, income for local communities has increased by 20, as hunting-related activities bring in tourists and boost businesses. Florida's reputation as a premier hunting destination has only grown, with top hunters playing a crucial role in controlling the alligator population while helping farmers recover from livestock losses caused by these predators. Though crocodile hunting remains a daunting challenge, it's one that skilled hunters have embraced in an effort to protect both people and livestock. Their efforts to control the population and prevent further attacks deserve recognition. A like or a word of encouragement can go a long way in showing support for these brave individuals. So let's cheer them on by leaving a comment and recognizing their hard work in keeping Florida safe.